Joining us now is Fisker CEO, Henrik Fisker. Henrik, thank you for joining us off these numbers. So, so tell us a little more and give us some color about the demand you're seeing around that 30,000 reservation number for the ocean. Well, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing a really uh, amazing uptake since the beginning of this year. We have actually seen a 400% increase in reservations per day over last year. And it just keeps going up. And I think people are discovering the value of this vehicle. Of course, also seeing that it's coming out this year, uh, which is important. Uh, but we're actually almost passing 31,000. Uh, so that's really great. We are, we are very happy about that. And of course, on target and to deliver the vehicle in November. And then on pair, you also opened reservations, I believe, this week. This is the second model. It's a cheaper model, not an SUV. What have you seen as far as interest so far? Well, first of all, we haven't said it's not an SUV. We haven't said what it is at all. Uh, we've only okay. shown one image, <laughs> but we opened but reservations. But it's not priced like yesterday. an SUV. That's right. It's it's priced at twenty nine thousand nine hundred, and we opened reservation only yesterday, and we already have over a thousand reservations, which represents almost a, a million dollar in potential revenue per hour, which is pretty amazing. So I think we're right with our assessment of being able to sell well over 250,000 of that vehicle per year, and we'll start deliveries in 2024. That, that target, Henrik, for, for November, uh, how, how tied is that to uh, chip shortages and supply chain issues? Is it possible it could get pushed back still, or are you very certain November will, will be met? At this point, I'm very certain, you know, we have uh, weekly meetings on supply chain and chip shortages. It's something our teams, uh, both here and with our suppliers, are deeply involved in. You know, I've been on the phone uh, personally or, or actually on WhatsApp with the chairman of Foxconn to see if we can get some chips directly, uh, which it looks like we can. So it's definitely something that's tight. But at this point, I don't see any reason why we're not going to launch in November and start delivering vehicles. So I'm very confident at this point. I made in Ohio, right? Well, the Fisker Ocean is made in Austria and Europe in a CO2 neutral plant, and the pier is going to be made in Ohio here in the U.S. So I think we're kind of hedging both Europe and U.S., uh, which I'm also very happy about. Uh, Henrik, if you step back and, and look at the surge in competition in, in, in your area and EVs uh, in particular, do you think it has gone too far? Of course, you, you're a strong believer in your own future, but do you think some of your rivals will fall by the wayside and, and go out of business in the next five years? You know, I'm happy you asked this question because I think being having been early out there with luxury EVs way, way uh, back then, it's clear that the, the luxury EV market is starting to get saturated. What nobody has really attacked yet is sort of the cool, sexy looking SUV under $40,000. And nobody has attacked the market with a really sexy, cool vehicle under 30,000. So those are the two segments we're going into. And what, it, what this is all about, and what I believe is going to cut out the winners, is who can take the most market share before 2025? Because let's face it, most of the large companies are not going to be able to fulfill every segment that we today have fulfilled in the gasoline engine vehicle market, in the electric vehicle market, there's going to be many segments open way past 2025. So that's why we are so focused on coming out with four new vehicles before 2025, because we want to take a big slice of this market, but in the low end, not in the luxury EV market, because I think that's starting to get saturated. So, so you mentioned the price point, which is lower than what we've seen, say, from a Tesla. Does that signal that it is getting cheaper to make EVs, or, or you're just going after something totally different? I think it signals that Fisker has a unique recipe to actually create affordable vehicles. And that's based on our business model uh, and it's based on our development method. Uh, so we have actually come up with a, a way to bring these vehicles to market way more affordable than our competition. And we want to be the first out there and grab a large market share. And I think we're way ahead of the curve. So who do you think your biggest competition is going to ultimately be in the next five years, Henrik? Well, it's probably going to be, uh, to a certain extent, uh, some of the European, German uh, premium makers uh, that are, you know, trying to come out with some vehicles. Uh, I think in the U.S., less maybe uh, from the big three because they're focused pretty much on trucks. And then you have the other upstarts, which is focused on luxury vehicles. Um, so I think we are in a really good place and see very little competition because don't forget, when I'm talking about launching a vehicle in November this year, if you have that idea today, it's going to take you four years to do it. 
And if you have an idea for a $29,000 car, it's going to also take you four years. We have already passed the first engineering milestones in the pair. So, you know, we are ahead of the curve. And so I'm not really worried about competition for us in the, in the near future.